So let's talk about using Serum as a sampler. There's actually a couple ways that you can go about using audio inside of Serum that's actually going to play back in somewhat the same way that you originally heard it before you brought it into Serum. Uh, the first way is super easy, uh, and that's just exploiting the fact that the noise oscillator is actually just a sampler. So let's go ahead and turn off our oscillators, turn on our noise oscillator, which currently sounds like this, really nothing in there because it's only noise. And I have a uh, little perk here, a little percussive shot. Let's go ahead and drop that in here. All we need to do is make sure that we've enabled our uh, noise oscillator, that we've turned it on. And then as we hover over the name here, which is also the menu, you'll see a little green plus icon appear. And that means you are free and clear to drop your sample in. And by default, uh, it's just going to be uh, not tracking pitch. So regardless of the keys that I'm pressing on my keyboard, I'm still getting the same result. So first thing I want to do is turn on uh, key tracking. Uh, so now pitch is going to change with the keys that I play. So I can get a little bit more out of it, right? Now let's talk about using uh, Serum as a layering tool when we're using um, the noise oscillator as a sampler. Uh, because it's one thing just to bring in a sound, use the sampler function, and then you know toss some effects on it or something like that. But to actually use the rest of the synth is another thing entirely. So let's go ahead and turn on our oscillator. Let's pull up uh, maybe just some basic shapes here. Let's go with a square wave this time, change it up a bit. All right, uh, let's also drop this a couple of octaves so we get some separation here. Let's also shape our sound just a little bit uh, so it's more in line with the percussive sound that we've got going on. And maybe we'll turn up our voicing just a little bit. Let's turn up our oscillator V. All right, so this is a really good example of how to add some quick punch, um, kind of boost that transient um, in a percussive type sound. It's very, very simple. You don't have to use a percussive sound. Uh, you can use any sound. You're going to shape the delivery of that sound, either with your main amp envelope like we have here, um, or if you're using a longer form sound inside of the sampler, inside the noise oscillator that is, um, you can just toss a, a separate envelope on that uh, level knob and shape it any way you like and change the delivery of it. So just a quick little tip there of how you might want to use um, this way of sampling with Serum. Another way of sampling with Serum, um, and I have a new instance opened here, is with longer form samples. And I actually have some vocals uh, here. It's a uh, female saying, do you feel? Do you feel? And it's drenched in big reverb, and obviously this is not going to translate very well if we don't bring it in through just the traditional sampler mode, because what we're going to be doing when we bring it into an oscillator is actually creating a new wavetable out of the audio file that you're bringing in. So let's just talk through the options here about importing audio and what it actually means. Um, when we hover over one of our oscillator panels, with an audio file that's compatible with it, we see different import options. These are also the same options that you find here under import. So just to run through these really quickly, um, audio via dynamic pitch zero snap. It just means that it's going to import the audio. It's going to create a pitch map and it's going to try to find uh, zero crossing points um, in the wavetables. Via dynamic pitch follow, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to create a pitch map, but it's going to not attempt to find uh, zero crossing points for you. Um, fixed frame size is actually going to be uh, a certain number of frames, uh, regardless of the size of the audio that you bring in. Um, and then these uh, FFT, which is um, Fast Fourier Transform, or additive, 
uh, as we commonly refer to it as. But it's also this kind of resynthesis uh, option. And you have these different uh, numbers next to each one, 256 through 2048. Now, these are actually speaking to the length, okay, the length of the audio that's going to be processed. So if it's a really, really short percussive sound, you're probably going to want to use the 256. Okay, you don't need uh, a big import size for a small amount of audio. The other thing to consider is, is that as you go up in length, in, in the number of actual samples, we're going to lose resolution. How odd is that? You, you would kind of think just intuitively that perhaps 2048 is going to give you greater resolution than 256. 256 is actually going to give you greater resolution, but less samples to work with. Go figure. All right, so for a sample this size, we're probably gonna fall somewhere in the middle, but let's go ahead and try to bring it in at the maximum rate and see what happens, see how degraded the audio quality is. Uh, so again, this is going to be uh, Serum's attempt at creating a playback of, of the original spoken word. So I'm just gonna toss an envelope on here, and I'm gonna scan through this file and see what it sounds like. Well, that was very fast. So let's bring this down, maybe to a bar. Let's bring down an octave. Okay, there it is. Let's turn this up so everyone can hear it clearly. It's pretty degraded. You can kind of make it out though. Let's try something else. Let's try bringing in it at this 1024 instead. A little bit clearer and it looks like we have plenty of space left to work with here. So let's go ahead and drop it in an even shorter one and see what happens. Hey, now we're getting a little more clarity. That's actually a pretty cool effect. Uh, let's go ahead and bring it in at the at the smallest one, see what it does. So that's pretty cool. So this is just a couple of ways that you can work with samples inside of Serum. The first one, of course, is to just use the noise oscillator, which is actually just a sampler. And you're gonna play back your audio the same exact way that you imported it. You can even make it uh, uh, connected to uh, pitch tracking, key tracking, uh, and it can change in pitch as you go up and down your keyboard. You can even put it into one shot mode, which means it's gonna play all the way through regardless of how long your fingers are actually on your keyboard. Um, and then there's the option of actually creating a new wavetable out of audio that you bring into Serum. And that's a little trickier, as we've just seen. Now, had we used an audio file that was not drenched in reverb, we would actually be hearing a pretty darn clear uh, playback uh, representation of the original voice. It's interesting, though, that we're actually hearing a synthesized version of the reverb tale um, in our original signal. So just a couple of ways that you can use audio inside of Serum. I hope that this helped to uh, uh, kind of clear things up for those that were confused about import options and how to actually use audio in Serum. Um, feel free to leave a comment below. Let us know what you thought. Let us know what you want to see next time in a tutorial for Serum. Thanks again for tuning in, folks. Always a pleasure to see you here. We'll see you again soon. Cheers. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest PureMind tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at PureMind.com.